Now that, that is a car, man. That is a car. Look at that. Good old classic 50s car. Montclair. Look at those hubcaps. Check out that steering wheel, man. Check out that steering wheel. Check out that column. Oh, man. Now that is a, check out that classic radio. Playing the Elvis hits from the 50s. Check out those classic seats, brother. And the little thing you sit on in the middle, like I used to sit on it. Like, how do you like the light and the light there? Like, look at that. That's a, that is that's what cars had style, brother. Not like they were it's all round. They're all the same. Like these cars down here, they're all boring round. They all look the same. You need to learn how to make cars, your car companies, like they did back in those 50s and 60s, in the glorious 50s and 60s. There it is. There's a, it's a Mercury, brother. A good old classic Mercury. And see, the sun is going down here in Park Ridge. Good old Park Ridge, Illinois. Perfect time to see this classic car. Yeah, how do you like, and how do you like, it's like, like a devil's pitchfork, only backwards. There, see, well, it's actually a plane, but going that way, it looks like a devil's pitchfork. When you stand out a stick there, yeah, it's like a plane. Check out this car. Now, this is a car, brother. That is a car. That's the way they should make cars today. They're all round, man. They're all stinking round like, like they've been, you know. I mean, come on. Boring, boring. They all look the same. No style. No class. Like, yeah, the gold bashes aren't building them like they did back in the glorious 50s and 60s, brother. And like a 1920s Model T. They do have replicas of Model Ts you can get. I think specialty made. Because I've seen some replica Model Ts, you know, at the car shows and stuff. But you know, that my dad's favorite car. My dad loved Model Ts. Yeah, I, I sat in one of those little things in the back with my dad. Had this big uh, Plymouth, I think it was. Mercury Plymouth or whatever. 1950s. You know, like I was like a tank car. I think it was a... Anyway, little thing in the middle. I died always sit in that seat in the middle. But we had to take turns. Like, Daddy, I want this seat. I want this seat, you know. And, uh, as long as my sister would get it, as long as my little brother would get it, but I'd get it a lot. That's why I loved cars. When I was five years old, my dad took pictures of cars home from work every day, and I had like a stack of pictures of cars on top of my table. I was so high they were falling off the table. Yeah, yeah it's a cute doggy. Hi, doggy. How you doing? All right, look at that doggy. Look at that face. Hey, buddy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, anyway. So um, I was, I, you know, I loved cars back then. I'd always get a new picture from my dad every day after work. By the way, I got sad news about my dad. My dad, 95, you know, he wasn't, he's kind of fading, wasn't doing too good. Well, he passed away today at age 95. Yeah. Sorry to tell you, at the nursing home in Des Plaines, and, you know, Lee Manor there. And I got my Maranatha wrestling shirt on, because I wrestled varsity at Maranatha Baptist Bible College from 80 to 85. And I was second in conference one year against Pills at the Pillsbury Baptist Bible College. I was second in conference, I think it was 83 at weight 134. I got second. I should have won. That match was, you know, the referee kind of made, made a bad call. He called, he said I was stalling, but I was pulling the guy back. I put a headlock on him. I was pulling him back like with about eight seconds left, trying to pull him backwards, pull him to his knees. So I, that, was, that was my move, headlock and pull him back. And Coach Peterson, you know, Olympic gold medal of 72, 76 silver, and he made the 80 team, by the way. That was boycotted under Carter's administration because of the terrorist threat. So when you think about it, President Carter, Jimmy Carter, the peanut farmer, he helped save my coach's life. I might not have had him as my coach if he went to that Olympics, if they'd had that Olympics. Because the terrorists might have killed our, uh, our teams. You never know what could have happened. There could have been bombs, they could have opened up fire, whatever. There was a terrorist threat at that Olympics, and then, so, because of that, the, the, the Olympics in 80 were boycotted, but my coach was on the team, and so was his brother, I think, and uh, Ben Peterson. He was my coach over at Maranatha back from 80 to 85, and I was varsity four years. By the way, rest in peace. So rest in peace, Pop Rock. Here's the historic Pickwick Theater, where my dad took me to see the mummy when I was five years old in the spring of 62. Right in front of the theater, man. I begged my dad to let me see the mummy right here. Right here in front of the ticket booth. You know, my dad who passed away today, I had to beg him on my hands and knees right here. I said, Dad, please, Dad, please, I want to see the mummy. Dad, please. And I'm down like this, I go, Dad, please, I want to see the mummy. Dad, please, I want to see the mummy, you know. And 
He reaches down, he goes, all right, David, if it means that much to you. And so I said, oh, yeah, I knew you would. You know, I ran in before he changed his mind. He paid the thick guy here like five cents to see the mummy. Spring of 62 when I was five years old. That's Christopher Lee and the mummy. And then about a year or two later, I saw the Phantom of the Opera here, the, fan, the hammer version, for like five cents. My mom took us. Jack the Giant Killer, I saw that about a, when I was seven here for five cents at a Saturday matinee. About special effects by Ray Harryhausen. Those were the days, man, to make good movies. Now today it's all digital smidgen all crud. Digital smidgen all crap. You understand? I don't need digital effects to make a good movie. I'm David Rock Nelson, and I make good movies. And I don't need digital CGI. One smart Alex said to me, he says, can I ask you a question? And I told him about Devil Ant and my movies and stuff. He says, can I ask you a question? I hope it won't bother you, but how much do how much you spend on CGI? I, I said, none, man. I don't need CGI. He goes, I said, you know, I like the old movies, you know, from the 60s and stuff, the, the 30s through the 60s. You know, like Joe Frankenstein movies and stuff. You know what he says? He says, I told him I used to watch Creature Features on WGN and Sven Gulli, and he says to me, he says, oh, you're, you're showing your age. And I'm like, I said, hey, I don't care. I said, I'm proud to show my age, brother. I'm proud to be stuck in the 60s, man, the glorious 1960s, brother. That was a, that was a good, fun time. That's when they had all, that was the time of the monster boom, monster trading cards down here at Ben Franklin, down the street, a block away. Way down there is a vacant building way down there. Just south of the library right here, Parker's Library. Just south of the pick, the pick looks back there. But you know, Ben Franklin at 130 South Prospect, that's where I got monster cars when I was five years old for five cents, a pack of five monster cars. By, it was called Spook Stories, made by Leaf Brands in Chicago. And you know, then they also, later on, they had the Monster Labs cars, those mini cars, you get 12 to a pack, but they're perforated, and you, you bend them and pull them apart. Those are the AIP monsters, like War of the Colossal Beast, and uh, movies like that. I was a teenage werewolf, how to make a monster. I was a teenage Frankenstein by American International Pictures, you know, Samuel Z. Arkoff and Nickerson or whatever his name, Nicholson. Roger Corman movies and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, okay, I'm going to shut up. I'll see you. Anyway, rest in peace, Papa Rock. And uh, he was an Army, World War II veteran. I'm Marine, I was a Marine vet for four years, 76 to 80. My dad was in World War II. Like the Army says, hua hua. The Marines go, hua. Okay, so Semper Fi to my dad, too, even though he's an Army man. I, since he was in the Army and I was in the Marines, we say Ura. I will say what the Army says. Hua, hua. That's for my dad, an Army vet. World War II. I rest in peace. Rest in peace, Papa Rock. We love you. Jesus loves you and I love you. Okay, see you. i got to be quiet. I'm in the library now. Quiet, Rock. Can't talk in the library.